Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 22 and also the last video of the series. So if we made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've learned something. And I've saved the modifications panel for the very last video because this panel can be a little confusing and kind of intimidating. So let's right click on the display port, hit init, and then bring oscillator two and three all the way down. And let's bring our cutoff up. Okay, so let's go to the modifications panel. So there's basically two different things happening here. For the first panel, this one's a little bit easier to understand. So you know how when we're modulating different things on these panels, let's say like the cutoff is modulated by envelope two by changing this knob and the LFO2, so on and so forth. This first upper panel here is basically gonna be the stuff that's not on the screen. So for example, if we wanted to automate this knob over here, this FM1 to two and three, then this is where we would find that, right? So let's select LFO2, kind of how we've been doing throughout the course, and let's change this here. And we can instantly see that this M over here is getting modulated. So if we play something, we don't hear any changes. And that's because if we read here, it says FM1 to two and three, and we're only listening to one. So we have to turn one down and bring up number two. So these little flutters here is basically like moving this knob up and down and up and down according to the speed of LFO2. Now you also see here it says cross mod depth and that is found in the digital oscillator right over here. So moving on from here, we have the noise and dual VCO mix. So again, LFO2, and let's turn this knob here and then go back to triple VCO and we can see this noise is getting modulated by LFO2. So let's turn this oscillator down and let's see what it sounds like. And we can always change the speed. Make kind of cool sounds like that. And moving on from there, we also have the dual VCO, which is gonna be modulated here. And you might be asking yourself, okay, well, why is it on the mix VCO one and two? And that's because on VCO number one, we can always select noise here and uncheck this other waveform. Kind of doing something like that. Moving on from there, we have DCO and that's the noise up here. Kind of hear that ch -ch -ch kind of going off. We increase the volume. You might hear it a little bit more. And then moving on from there, we have the dual VCO eco, which is going to be an oscillator number one, which again, we can change to noise and have the same effect that we had on the triple VCO. Last but not least, we have it on the digital here, and this is going to be on the mix. And that's because both of these can be selected for the, uh, for the noise over here and kind of moving back and forth. Now we're not really gonna hear any changes in this case because both oscillators are selected on the same sound, so you kinda can't really hear a difference. But yeah, just in case you had something different here, you just have to change the waveform and you hear something a little bit different there. So moving on from that, let's select none and reset that over here. Now we have the resonance mod, and this is basically the same concept here, but dealing with the resonance and all of the filters here. So this one says emphasis, and then we have the resonance there. So basically all the filters, you're going to have the option to modulate the resonance. Now we have the filter FM mod. So obviously, you know, same concept also applies here. LFO2, let's turn this here, and then we can see this FM oscillator one right over here. And then it's basically doing the same thing in all the filter modules. Now, last but not least, as far as the top panel is concerned, we have the feedback. So as you know, here in the uh, triple VCO, we have this extra panel here, which is the feedback knob. So when we turn this, that's where this knob is going to be modulated. But keep in mind, if, it's, if we select like dual VCO eco, we have to have this high pass filter also engaged to be able to use this one. If we selected something like that, then this would be gone. And now this modulation would be pointless. So now take a deep breath and let's tackle the lower panel down here. So the first thing for us to know is this lower panel is basically changing different modulations. So if we want to take LFO2, for example, like we've been using, and we want to change it in a certain way, these are different options that we have to modify to process these different types of modulations. So in a nutshell, let's go to the triple VCO. Now let's say we want to take LFO2 and we want to rectify it. Okay, first thing we, we might think, what does rectify mean? Now, if we think of rectify, it's gonna remove all of the negative values from that modulation. So anything below the zero line, it's going to remove. So basically in this case, if we had LFO2, it's a bipolar LFO, it goes positive, it goes negative, and so on and so forth. We select the polarity switch and then it removes the negative, making it only positive, right? Or unipolar. So let's say, for example, we want to listen to this with pitch because that's kind of a good way to visualize stuff. So let's turn the volume up for oscillator number one and let's turn this noise down. So we just have oscillator one going to our output. Now let's select LFO2 in the tune mod here and let's turn on 
Oscillator 1 for the tune modens turns something like this. Let's slow that down a little bit. So we have LFO as a triangle shape modulating the pitch of oscillator number one. And keep in mind, this is a bipolar LFO, so positive, so higher pitch, and then it goes below, it goes negative into a lower pitch. So let's say we're thinking to ourselves, we want to remove these negative values, right? So we go over here to the rectify and we say, okay, this is asking us what modulation source do we want to remove the negative values from? So we select here, we go from none, and we select LFO2. Now we might think, okay, let's play it here. But it sounds the exact same, it looks the exact same, nothing's really happening. And the reason for that is, is because this is saying LFO2 is being rectified, so removing the negative values. Now we need to select this modulation source, we need to go from LFO2, now we need to go to rectify. And now this is when we're gonna see the change. And if we go back to LFO number two, we have that original shape again. So let's go to none over here. And then now for invert. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. It will invert the value of whatever modulation source that we plug into it. So for this demonstration, we can go to a saw up, for example, and let's go, so we're still on LFO2, so. It's just gonna be a constant rising in pitch. So if we want to invert that, yes, we could go to a saw down, for sure, but to demonstrate this point, we can always say select LFO2, and then instead of keeping it on LFO2 on this modulation, let's go to invert here, which is right here. So that could be something kind of interesting. So you can even think outside the box. You could say like, I want to rectify a certain shape and then you plug in rectify into invert and then you put invert onto a modulation source. So you're kind of changing a shape that's changed the shape, so on and so forth. Hopefully you get that point there. <laughs> Moving on from there, we have quantized. So now this one's kind of interesting. So let's go back to LFO2. Let's change the waveform to a sine wave. <laughs> So we have something like that, right? Now for quantized, now this one is gonna be kind of interesting here. So it's basically taking whatever modulation source that you're giving it and it's quantizing it, right? So if you have a unipolar value of two, which is this knob over here, as we can see, it's two. If it's unipolar, you're gonna get two different steps. And if it's bipolar, which we have right now, it's gonna give us four different steps. So let's take a look at that. So our regular LFO is a sine wave. <laughs> Now let's plug that in over here. So let's say LFO2 needs to be quantized. Now let's change from LFO2 up here to quantize. Now those are gonna be our four different steps. Now let's say we want to go to uni or, uh, bipo unipolar and that's gonna be two steps. And if you would like more steps, that's where this knob would come in handy. So very interesting thing there. So last but not least, as far as these four go, we have lag. So lag is going to slow down fast changes in a modulation source. So let's say if you had a square wave, it's gonna make that round. So let's take a look at that here. So let's select LFO2 and let's select square high low. And let's go back to our modulation here and let's select LFO2 again. So we have our square wave modulating the pitch, higher pitch, lower pitch, higher pitch, lower pitch, so on and so forth. Very square sounding, very abrupt, right? So now let's go to lag and let's input our LFO2 like we had over here. And then let's select from here, let's go to our lag. Now let's take a listen to this. So there's very fast changes of that square where it just goes from one value instantly to the next value. This is creating that smoothingness to it. And if we turn this all the way to the left, we basically get what we had before. That square steppy sound. And as we increase this here, we get more and more and more smoothing. And in this case, it almost sounds like glide. And then from here, it goes pretty smooth.
So that's basically how this panel works in a nutshell. You're taking a modulation source, whatever we have available available to us, and based upon what these other ones do, that's going to give you a different shape. And then we use these these names like quantize, lag, rectify, invert on different sources that we want. And you know, if we want this knob over here instead of envelope two, we want to select multiply, quantize, whatever these are. That's where we would select those as a modulation source. So it basically takes one source, does some math to it, changes it up, and then we use that new version on whatever we want to modulate. Which brings us to over here, so multiply and add. So it's the same kind of concept, right? Except here, it's just taking two different sources. So let's, you know, you could be like LFO1 multiplied by an envelope. What would that sound like on something else? Or down over here, it's adding two different values. And then same thing is here, you know, you plug in your two values and then whatever the output is, you know, the product for the multiplication, you would select multiply, which is down over here, or you'd select add if you want to do this down over here. So. Hopefully that makes sense. If there's any questions about these panels here, please let me know because it can be a little intimidating, kind of confusing, kind of, you know, scratching your head for a little bit. But uh, yeah, so let's go over here to scope because let's end on a very easy way here. It's very cool that they've added an oscilloscope into a synthesizer. So if we did like an init preset and just gave it one uh, saw wave over here, increased our cutoff, we can see what our waveform actually looks like. And that's very cool, right? And then we can change the frequency over here to kind of get a little different view of that. Changing the horizontal, and then if we double click this back to default, we'll look at scale. And it's just changing the vertical position of the uh, of the scale, or of the waveform. So maybe if something's too loud or something like that, we can't really make out what's happening on the top end. We can always bring it down and kind of get a better look at it. And then also you can always right click this here and you have different versions of things to look at. But keep in mind, the higher up on this list you go, the more CPU you will use. So wind does look cool. It's nice, but it's gonna use a little bit more CPU so keep that in mind. And there's other different versions here. There's fire, which kind of looks cool as well. There's glow, there's fast, and then there's eco. Truth be told, I don't necessarily look at this panel here too much. Uh, I spend most of my time not in here, so I don't really use these menus here. If anything, I'll keep this on Eco just in case if I ever switch to it and I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, cool. And that's pretty much about it. But yeah, so that's basically all this, uh, the modifications and scope in a nutshell. And like I said, if there's any questions you guys have, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, I know the course has been kind of long, so thank you so much for sticking out for 22 entire video. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. That's not this course, by the way, unless there's an update. <laughs>